three topic left so we have to start from here in evolution and after evolution we will start with the ecology part right so uh, you will get the question normally the questions come from this part so uh, the first thing that hardy weinberg law was given by a mathematician he was not a scientist from the biology background so english mathematician g h hardy and german physician he was a scientist from the physics w weinberg in 1908 they given the hardy weinberg law uh what was the purpose behind this law the evolutionary changes and population genetics the law was based for on the evolutionary changes and population genetics right what was the law the law was relative frequency of allele in a population of sexually reproducing organism remains constant for generation to generation so that was their law and they given a formula right what was the formula formula was p square plus q square is equal to p square plus q square plus 2 bq what is the p square p square is the frequency of a dominant allele right that is tt capital t capital t q square is the frequency of recessive allele a small t small t and what is a 2 pq that is the frequency of a heterozygous allele right so this was this is the hardy weinberg law uh now the uh, one question is like this way match the following uh, column 1 to column 2 right wallace malthus hardy weinberg law right so match the column to one and select the correct option that gives the code right so c c that is hardy weinberg law 2 p is 2 square plus q square plus 2 pq is equal to 1 right so that is the correct option right so c matches with the third one so that's how we have to match that right industrial melanism piston d the second one right remember d the second one right and uh, that's how we have to uh, malthus and wallace wallace given the wallace and darwin given the natural selection law so a will be uh, a will match with the fourth malthus will uh, match with the this one easy population so that's how we we have to match that right so that's how we have to choose the correct option now uh, there is a question which is based on the hardy weinberg law the question is that you can get this kind of the calculative question in hardy weinberg law at a particular locus the frequency of allele a is 0.6 right and and that of allele small a is 0.04 what would be the frequency of heterozygous in the random mending population so we have to every everything is given over here look so when it say frequency of a so i have said that is the frequency of a so formula is t square plus q square plus 2 pq is equal to 1 so what is the p 0.6 what is the q 0.4 so frequency of recessive allele small a is 0.4 frequency of dominant allele capital a is 0.6 right so what he is asking they are asking the heterozygous mean what will be the 2 pq right they are asking for the 2 pq so what we will do for the 2 pq what we have to do 2 into p into q so 2 into 0.6 into 0.4 so what will be 2 into 0.24 so what will be 0.48 that is the correct option so that will be the answer that's how we have to calculate did you got that thing or not yes sir got it if you want you can take this screenshot that kind of the question you will get this is question from the previous year pqy right so this was a just uh, uh, example that's why uh, i have incorporated it in the ppt so that you get and the second you can see that here even it have been asked in the matching part so that 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 kind of the question you will get i think hardy weinberg law it's clear shafala clear yes sir. yes sir okay thank god you people understand very easily it means the next thing biston between area case so in the match the following there was a matching the biston between area case so biston between area so this is the example of industrial melanism 
you must have gone through because this is important for a board examination as a written question as well. But still, I, I'm just uh, repeating it again. So this is an example for natural selection. Uh, distant between area, it's a kind of the moth as it is visible in the picture. Uh, two kind of the distant between area species are found. One a light color, another in the darker color, right? So what happened in older days in the Britain? The bark were covered with the lichens, right? So lichen cover the bark of the all trees. So basically the stem of trees were total white color because the bark, uh, the lichen color was white. So what happened? Uh, in the white color bark, these white color moth can hide themselves easily. But the dark color moth, they cannot, they can be easily uh, demarcated by the crows, right, and other birds. So the crow and other bird used to detect easily and used to eat them. But white color of the moth can that they cannot be detected easily, right? And their population increases. That's how the dark color population was very low, and the white color moth population was very too much over there, right? Now, what happened? Industrialization started in the 16th century. Industrialization started in the Britain. Uh, industries came, and industries used to run by the diesel and the basically coal, majorly on the basis of coal, because at that time coal was the basic source of main source of the energy diesel engine were not popular even that uh, diesel engine have not been discovered at that time right so then because of the heavy industries the carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide it emitted from the industry because of the sulfur dioxide and co2 so basically sulfur dioxide pollution they kill moth uh, they sorry they kill the lichen so because of sulfur pollution all the lichen destroyed now the actual color of the bark was dark now what happened? The thing reverse. The bark becomes the dark, and now the dark color moth could hide themselves easily, but white color can be detected easily. Now the population change, uh, interaction uh, population pattern reverse. The white were eaten more rapidly by the predator, and uh, then the dark they can uh, hide themselves easily. Right. So this example is called industrial melanism example, and it is uh, this is an example of natural selection. Right. So those which can adapt themselves in the changing environment, uh, they can survive. And those who cannot adopt themselves in the changing uh, environment, they won't survive. Right. So that is example of natural selection. Is that clear? Distant between area and then industrial melanism. Yes, it was easy. So last but not the least, look, you have to take a screenshot of every part. This this part human uh, evolution uh, i have made it by myself because to uh, make it because you will get the question from here right so how does the human evolve human evolution take in place this is the sequence and flow chart of human evolution right you have from here only otherwise it is really very difficult to remember but this graph is very clear, crystal clear. It will tell you uh, every part. So try to understand. First, like an Australian continent, there were some shrews. Shrews, like something mouse-like, something squirrel-like uh, organism. It was a shrew. So shrews were there. From the shrews, origination of lemur and torsessons taken place, right? So further after uh, a long time, some organism were evolved. They were like lemurs, lemur you know, and torsioners, right? From lemurs and torsioners, the origination of Parapithecus taken place. Parapithecus, from the Parapithecus, three kind of the organism evolved, right? So Parapithecus was the basic stock, right? From here, the three kind of the organism originated. First, the new world monkey. Second, the old world monkey, right? And the third, Dryopithecus, right? So earliest fossils of the Parapithecus have been found from Egypt, and they belongs to a era Oligocene. Clear? Now what happened from this Parapithecus? Dryopithecus originated, right? From Dryopithecus, so fossils of the Dryopithecus, Africanser, 
that is a common ancestor of ape and common man the tropical forest of the east africa it has been discovered from the tropical forest of the east africa right it belongs to miocene period 25 million years ago it was close to the chimpanzee right so from where the fossil found right uh, which part of the uh, and uh, uh, what is the age of that fossil that kind of the question you will get right and i have under nine those things which are the question basically i want you to take the screenshot of every step right first go through with it then i will give you chance to take the screenshot uh, screenshot in steps right from dryopithecus number of the organism like gibbon originated orangutan originated chimpanzee originated gorilla originated right that's why they are the so this is the common ancestor of what ape so all these are apes gibbon orangutan chimpanzees and gorilla right all these are apes right they originated from dryopithecus and human originated from dryopithecus now we are studying the human evolution so that's why we won't go in these lines just from dryopithecus ramapithecus originated right evolution occur in asia and australia ramapithecus evolution occur in asia and australia it was ape like primate lived in trees and traveled on the ground at some time right jaw bone and teeth like human its jaw bone and teeth were like human right a small canine it means it was not exclusively a flesh eater small canine and large molars means they were vegetarian right and they ate the hard nut and seed they used to eat the hard nut and seed right ramapithecus from ramapithecus australopithecus evolved everything which is a question have been underlined i repeat it again australopithecus africanus it was the name of this australopithecus technical name appeared in south africa it is called as african ape man you will get the question which of the following is called african ape man which of the following is called a peking man which of the following is called java ape man right that kind of question have been asked you will get that question right you will get this question in your pvc air question paper go through with that right so it is called african ape man human and ape like feature it have the human and ape like feature uh it uh, it is a um, uh sorry okay so uh, uh fine so it is a you can uh, correct it. it is a terrestrial creature means it you it it you do not like uh, uh, uh rama pithecus is it do not used to dwell in the trees it used to uh, uh, live in the terrain right means ground right so it was a terrestrial creature and bipedal locomotion now it have start uh, walking with the two leg bipedal locomotion so first bipedal locomotion seen in australopithecus right they were herbivores and fully erect right their body was fully erect and they were herbivores right a small canine in caesar and teeth pelvic leg bone like man fossils were discovered from from where uh, just a minute okay fine fossils were discovered from ethiopia tanzania and probably uh, uh, probably pre uh, uh, just minute. probably oh four feet tall right most probably this was a four feet tall and uh, uh, its cranial capacity means the brain capacity what 500 cm cubic you have to remember the brain capacity as well right everything which is underlined that is the question right so from where it originated ethiopia tanzania cranial capacity 500 cm african ape man from where originated south africa now the next one uh the question uh, many time the question have been asked which of the following is tool maker this homo habilis is called tool maker right this homo habilis i have just make the uh, like uh, this one arrow right so now here whatever it written let me make arrow here as well so that you won't get confused this content belong to this one right. okay Right. So, it is uh, originated in Africa about two million years ago. More man-like 
primate. It looked like more like man. 1.5 to 1.8 meter tall. A small canine means not. Uh, it was omnivore. Light jaw. Community life lives. So it you they used to live in the community. Try to understand. That is a question. Who used to live like in the community? Homo habilis. Bipedal locomotion, fully erect. The first fossil made uh, fossil made tools, right? So Homo habilis was called tool maker because the first fossil man, the fossils of the man-made tools were found uh, uh, from the Homo habilis, right? Brain capacity. Now you can see from Australopithecus have 500 centimeter cubic brain capacity. Now it has 650 to 800 centimeter cubic brain capacity. They were carnivores and hunted large animal. Means they were the they were almost like human, right? Homo habilis. Next, after Homo habilis, it came the erect man that is called Homo erectus. So it had been asked which is the Java ape man, which is the Peking man, which is the Hindenburg man, right? So look, Java ape man. So the fossils of Homo erectus have been found in three places of the world. Indonesia, China, and Germany. In Indonesia, they have been found in the Java. So that's why we call them Java man. Homo erectus is called in Java man. In China, it is called Peking man. And in Germany, it is called Hedenberg man, right? All they, all, all these fossils belong to Homo erectus, right? It was erect man. 1.7 million years ago, it originated. 1.5 to 1.8 meter tall and erect posture. Tool of bone and stone Perhaps they know use of the fire. Perhaps they were aware with the use of the fire. I mean, they invented the fire, right? Flatter and thicker jaw. Jaws were flat and thick. And pro, uh, protruding jaws means their mouth was something protruded, right? Protruding jaws. A small canine, small canine, and larger molar means they were more herbivores. Brain volume all 800 to 1300. Uh, 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 thousand cc means their brain capacity was more. That's why they were more intelligent, more like app man than modern man. They used to look like more app man, not modern man. They were omnivore, used to eat everything. Homo sapiens. This Homo sapien, right? So this is called Neanderthal man. Now Neanderthal man, flat cranium. This this head was flat. Flat cranium, sloping head. So this head was sloping up uh, outside like uh, gorilla and all that. And protruding jaws and chins. Lives in cave. So that is the question. So Neanderthal man, first time the human, they lived in caves, built hut and skilled hunter and used the fire. Right? They buried the dead. That question has been asked. They buried the dead man. They have religion. Clothing and social customs, they were aware with the clothing to use the cloth and cover their body and they used to know the social custom. They uh, not participated in agriculture and husbandry. They did not get the agriculture and husbandry have not been started. They have been discovered from Neanderthal Valley of the Germany. That is the question have been asked. Neanderthal uh, Valley of the Germany. 100 individual discover. So there was a graveyard of 100 individual. From there they have been discovered. They belongs to late Pleistocene, 10,000 to 34,000 years ago. Primitive form of Homo sapiens. That is the primitive form of Homo sapiens. Uh, the short structure means their height is now less. Previously, in the last two, we have that uh, discussed that the height was from 1.5 to 1.8. Here, the height is 1.5 meter to 1.66 meter. Erect posture. In a strong shoulder, and now you can see their cranial capacity. Brain capacity is 1300 cc to 1600 cc. I mean, they have more brain capacity, right? And they were the omnivores. Last but not the least, after the Neanderthal man, Homo sapiens came. First fossil, uh, they have been found in Cro Magnon rocks, right? That's why they are also known as the Cro Magnon. The first fossil found in the Cro Magnon rock, that is the France. That question has been asked. Uh, they evolved in the Africa and migrated here. Evolution basically taken place in Africa and they migrated in France, right? 34,000 years ago, 1.8 meter tall body, large skull, strong jaw, close teeth, 
wisdom teeth was present high head broad face narrow nose and elevated the prominent chin they made these sophisticated tools they were the hunter they were the omnivores and animal uh, 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 they used to they used to wear animal skins and they developed uh, painting and carving that is the question i have made the star over here right and yet not taken the agriculture and husbandry even the homo sapiens have not taken or invented the agriculture and animal husbandry finally we the humans we are the homo sapiens sapiens right we are the homo sapiens sapiens we are not homo sapiens only homo sapiens sapiens right we appeared in the 25 uh, uh, 25000 years ago it's 25000 not 2500 25000 years ago right uh and spread in 10000 years ago right so before 10000 years ago spread everywhere uh thinning of skull bone this skull bone become thin reduction in the uh, uh, cranial capacity now the cranial capacity reduced 1300 to 1600 uh development of uh, uh, development of uh, development of uh, uh the curve in the backbone so all those curve like uh, cranial curve uh, thoracic lumbar and coccygeal curve so that all curve developed at this point and superior brain power and weak body this body was weak but the brain power was superior right and feeble power of hearing and smell their hearing and smell power was weaker than those of uh, the previous generation and they started cultivation and uh, this one domesticating the animals right so these are the uh, this, this is the human evolution is there any doubt any question now we start the taking a screenshot first please take the screenshot hit till here again take the screenshot of this one just a minute Yes, take the screenshot. This one, please take the screenshot. Again. Last. so any question regarding the human evolution i know it is uh, not that much easy but you can at least you can remember all those thing which i have underlined they are the question actually need not to cram this complete sequence you have to remember the actually the cranial capacity uh the when they evolved where they evolved that kind of the question is that clear to all of you or any doubt safulla alan mamuna parath hanifa yes, no doubt sir everyone clear yes sir fine i hope you will remember all those underlined part right and definitely if you will remember i promise you you will get the question directly from here i promise you i have not left even single important thing which is not a question right this is very rich fine so the next part which we have to like uh, in our time table it should be uh, not it should be it is actually the organism and population we have to start with the ecology right clear should we start it a um, very easy kind of part this 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 part is difficult for you when you uh, prepare it for your board examination but it's not that much difficult for the neat exam basically you will get the conceptual question from here this organism uh, this all ecology part all the four chapter have very good weightage right so uh, as per the weightage now this is the section we are will cover all those four chapter of ecology part right then we will move to the next 11th class part we will cover here fine so first look organism and its environment so as we know that the formation of bio 
that takes place because of the two factors, two major factors that make the biome, right? What are those factors? Mean annual temperature and precipitation. Precipitation means the water, rainfall, right? These two things make a particular environment, right? A particular biome. And these two factors decide that what kind of the vegetation will be found at what place. For example, in the mountainous region, rainfall is less. The snowfall is more, right? Temperature is low. So you will find conifers, conical, all conical, conical kind of the flat trees, right? Hardwood, conicals, that will be the vegetation. And there will be mostly bushes, not grasses, right? Grasses will be very less amount, right? And the animal, they will have the large fur. They will be of dark color, right? So they, the type of the vegetation, type of the uh, type of the uh, animal will be uh, decided by the biome. And biome is decided by the two factors, the annual temperature and the annual precipitation. Second thing, look. In desert, high temperature, right, and uh, high temperature at daytime and low temperature at the night time, and uh, rainfall less than fifty degree, uh, fifty centimeter, right, annual. So what will happen? That will have desertic vegetation. There will be cactus kind of the vegetation. The most any animal will be nocturnal. They will come out at the night time, right, and they will be burrowing animal mostly, right, like a snake. Uh, lizards and uh, uh, the scorpions and all that kind, these kind of the animals, right? Uh, nocturnal animals, they come, they come out of uh, at the night time. So that's it. So biome refer to the, what is the biome actually? Biome refers to the community of plant and animals that occur naturally in any area, often sharing the common characteristic of that particular area, right? Biomes can be classified into three types, terrestrial, freshwater, and marine water biomes, right? Terrestrial means land biome, freshwater biome, you know, there is no salt concentration. Marine water means oceans and salt lakes. Sometimes the boundaries between two biomes merge, such as transitional area are called ecotone. That is important. What is the ecotone? When the boundaries of two biomes merge, that part is called ecotone. General example is the riparian areas or the salt marshes, right? From where the land start and from where the ocean part get end. So, and there is a, not a beach. So they become the land marshes, right? Salt marshes. So those salt marshes can be called as ecotone. So what you have to remember, you have to remember what are the ecotone, right? Ecotone is there. That is a question. Okay. So this was a bio and what the factor decide now look so a habitat a habitat habitat what is the habitat where the people are where the organisms are living right a habitat that environment where the people, a habitat where the organism is found Habitat have two key elements, right? It is easy, just you have to develop the concept. Uh, habitat have two key, key elements. Just give me one second. Uh, let me have water. Okay, so what are the key element of the habitat? Key element means those which have their important uh, uh, role, important participation in uh, making a particular habitat. So they are called key element. Abiotic factor and biotic factor. What are the abiotic factor basically? Abiotic means non-living factor and biotic means living factor. Abiotic factor, they are basically uh, temperature, water, light, soil, and pressure. 
and biotic factor pathogens parasite predator competitor they all are biotic factor means living factor collectively biotic and abiotic factor interact and they decide the type of organism the type of a ecosystem is found at particular area so a biotic component so we are going to study biotic abiotic component abiotic component or abiotic factor are non living chemical or physical part of the environment that affect the living organism and function of the ecosystem right if humidity is more means more rainfall right if humidity is less there will be less rainfall what is the horticology individual relationship with the environment is called horticology you have to remember these are the question or what is the horticology what is the synecology a group of organism means a community and its interaction with the environment its relationship with the environment that is called synecology right when we study that the my relationship with the environment that is a horticology when you study the uh, complete this society all the organism found in society and with the environment that is called synecology right look there are four major abiotic component as follow water sunlight oxygen soil and temperature right so rather than oxygen we can say air right so water sunlight air oxygen and soil and temperature out of this water is the most important component remember this is the question out of this water is the most important abiotic factor right even more than temperature now we will study one by one the abiotic factor first come to the temperature a rise in temperature can change the development of an animal that can cause change in the metabolic activity if the temperature will increase the metabolic activity will become faster if the temperature will decrease the metabolic activity will become lower right you will see those animals which are found in the uh, high temperature area they are more active those animals which are found in the uh, low temperature area they are slow right because high temperature increases the metabolic rate and low temperature decreases the metabolic rate all the organism can tolerate a certain range of the temperature and how extreme te uh, uh, temperature lead to the stressful condition right so organism on the basis of temperature we divide organism into two category eurythermal and stenothermal questions they are from directly from the ncert eurythermal they bear wide range of temperature humans can be found in the minus 40 minus 50 degree centigrade and humans can be found in the plus 60 degree centigrade or 50 degrees you will find the human in the arctic region as well right you will find them in the uh, the greenland all that areas where the ice sheet remains uh, 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 i uh, i sheet always are found uh, throughout the year right you will find the humans there you will find the human in the sahara desert as well right so humans are eurythermal they can bear the wide range of the temperature camels they can bear the wide range of the temperature that's why they are found in the everywhere right bulls cow right they can be at the wide range of temperature they are that's why they are found everywhere in every environment the next one is stenothermal they bear a very narrow range of the temperature if you have aquarium at your house what you can do if you'll put a 1 kg ice in the your aquarium the fish will die they cannot bear very low temperature if you'll put a half liter of the uh, hot water boiling water the fish will die because they cannot bear the very high range of the temperature so they have very narrow range of the temperature they are called stenothermal so organism on the basis of organism have been divided on the two type eurythermal and stenothermal right what is the effect of temperature so they affect the reproduction right yes they affect the reproduction uh some plant they flower on the basis of temperature they like those plant which flower at uh, low temperature they are called short day plant since they flower at the winter long day plant they flower at this time summer time right they are called long day plant right so that's how the plant uh, the uh, temperature affect the reproduction of organism 
वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग कोरल आर स्टेनोथर्मल राइट कोरल्स कैन नॉट बियर अ वेरी वाइड रेंज ऑफ द टेम्परेचर दे विल बी फाउंड ऑन दे विल बी फाउंड नॉट बिलो दी ट्वेंटी वन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर राइट दैट्स वाई कोरल्स आर फाउंड इन दी अराउंड दी इंडियन ओशंस राइट यू विल नॉट फाउंड दी कोरल ऑन अदर पार्ट दैट यू द ग्रेट दीज कोरल रीप्स आर फाउंड इन नियर टू द ऑस्ट्रेलिया इंडोनेशिया right india and all that right because they do not thrive so they are the stenotherm on the basis of uh, this is very very important take this screenshot and remember it hagestothermas many times on the basis of temperature we have divided the plant in the four category right Me megatherm mesotherm microtherm and hagestotherm megatherm are those plant which are found In the high temperature throughout the year, right? So those plant which are found on those area where the high temperature throughout the year, like cactus, like acacia, they can be a high temperature throughout the year. Mesotherm, where the temperature alternate change of the temperature takes place, high low, high low means winter come then summer come then winter come then summer come. So they are called mesotherms. Microtherms, they are found in low temperature, conifers, right? and hagestotherms are those which are found at very low temperature is that clear temperature part helen sir can you repeat what is mesotherm uh, mesotherm mesotherms are found like in india now there, there is summer now after the six month there will be winter then again summer will come so alternate temperature will be high and low right so those uh, plants and animals are found in this kind of the area this plant and also the, those plant and animals which are found in india sri lanka bangladesh pakistan and nepal and this area where the temperature changes every year right uh, twice temperature change low and high so those vegetations are called mesotherms got it yes sir okay so this was the first abiotic factor second abiotic factor is the water again water cover more than 70% of the earth surface in one form to another form compared to that of living organism require a small amount of water to live water is critical to survival right it's very critical component aquatic organism they depend on the quality of water not the quantity of water the water is everywhere they live in the water but what does mean by the quality of water quality of water means chemical composition of the water ph of the water and amount of the salt present in water right so aquatic organism are distributed in the oceans or in the water and their distribution depend on the quality of water these are the concept you have to understand right but in the land quantity of water decide what kind of the organism will be found if the low rainfall cactus high rainfall evergreen forest rain forest moderate waterfall this uh, uh what to say mesotherms right so mesotherm will be found in land water have salt level 5 sea water have 30 to 35 this question have been asked in land water salt composition what is the salt quantity in inland water that is 5 sea water 30 to 35 hyper saline lagoons they have more than 100 right that is the level of salt in the water salt concentration right aquatic organism have been divided on the basis of salt concentration two type urethaline and stelothaline urethaline they bear a wide range of the salt concentration shark is found everywhere it's a very tough animal so it can bear a wide range of salt concentration in the water but stenohalines are those which have very narrow range of salt concentration those organism which have a very narrow range of salt concentration neither high nor very low salt so on the basis of uh, salt concentration there are two kind of the organism urethaline and ester tell me is it clear or not
क्लियर कीप ऑन टेलिंग मी गाइस एलन इज इट क्लियर यस सर हनीफा आर यू गेटिंग इट और नॉट यस सर ओके वेरी गुड नो द नेक्स्ट वन लाइट sunlight sunlight is one of the most important abiotic factor and its primary source of it is the primary source of the energy on the earth plant require for the food synthesis so first light decide the photoperiodism photoperiodism we will again study why i am not elaborating it here because in the plant growth and uh, development that part will again study the short day plant long day plant and day neutral plant and those examples are the main question of the neat examination we will again study so photoperiodism means the light time period light duration at a particular day during the summer the duration of light is more that's why you say that day during the summer days are the longer right because the light period is longer right so those plant which flower in the long light period they are called long day plant in winter the light duration remains for the short time period so the days are so we say the days are short because the photo period is short those plant which reproduce or they flower in the winter they are called short day plant right so photo periodism means the time for which the light remains on the land or earth that uh, decide the reproduction in the plant and reproduction and animal migration right how the animal migration in the siberia when days become shorter means photo period become shorter winter comes in the siberia then there is a bird siberian crane it flew from the siberia it travel 11000 miles from the siberia and reaches to a place called bharatpur in india right and there they reproduce and uh, they wait for the winter to pass out in the siberia when winter pass out in the siberia they again go back to siberia now the most amazing thing is that they travel 11000 miles approximately 18000 km and they go back they do not forget the path they follow you cannot fly any jet plane fighter plane or any aeroplane even 18 km without uh, without this uh, air traffic control etc inspired you are the most intelligent organism of this earth still you cannot fly aeroplane even 18 km without atf air traffic control let us see so how does they follow how does they remember the path they follow can anybody tell me i promise you you cannot travel 500 600 km without gps no not at all you have to ask that every person with the path is the correct way is it the correct route right tell me guys any one of you have any idea any clue yes afulla do you have any idea no sir anifa any idea no idea look now uh what is that mm. look they follow the magnetic lines of the earth basically because the birds do not have that much larger brain like humans they follow the magnetic lines of the earth there is a north and south magnetic north and magnetic south pole they follow the magnetic line with the help of magnetic line they remember their path that's what the scientists have discovered right that's how they travel the 18000 km distance and they remember it Does anyone of you have seen the movie Core? 
few are a core. Any one of you? No. It's a very older movie, Hollywood movie. Core. No. These are the science fiction. We used to see sometimes. We used to watch these. Right. It's a science fiction. So it like it's a related with this one magnetic lines. That's why I asked you. Aquatic animal and the plant. More or less 500 meter in the ocean there is a no light. Right. So light is uh, light do not decide that much. Uh, distribution of the plant and animal in the aquatic life right so on the basis of light we divide organism in two category heliophytes plant in two category heliophytes and skyophytes heliophytes they can survive in the high light intensity they are found in the high light intensity skyophytes they are found in the low light intensity right so all those entire uh, in, indoor plants are skyophytes like money plant and all that they are skyophytes Okay, so this was something about the light, abiotic factor light, then soil. Soil, the composition, it's important. The soil depends on the climate, weathering process, means the rock weathering process, composition, salt and all that. Water holding capacity, pH value. Mineral and topography, these are the factors which decide the composition or the type of the soil of particular person, particular place. Climate, yes, climate will decide, colder, hotter, it will decide the type of the soil. Weathering process means erosion taking place or not taking place, that will also decide the type of the soil. Composition, like the grain size, water holding capacity. Can it hold the water like black soil can hold the water for longer time? Sand soil cannot. pH value that will decide the type of the vegetation. Mineral, yes. Topography means hilly region, plain, or on all that. Right. So soil is a critical abiotic factor. It is composed of rocks as well as decomposed plant and animal material. Okay. So this was the fourth abiotic factor. Response to abiotic factor. Response of organism to abiotic factor, right? Look. This is a graph. So what we see in the graph. Try to understand. We are the humans. When suppose that uh, the snowfall start at this place where I, I, I am, my blood temperature or body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. Right? The external temperature changes to minus 40 degrees centigrade, but my body temperature will remain in the 37 degrees. Right? We can maintain our body temperature. Right? Suppose that temperature goes up, it become 47, 48. 50 degree, 55 degree, but my body temperature will not rise. Body will maintain. Body will start sweating. Body will start sweating. Heat will like uh, my respiratory rate will increase, but body will maintain its temperature, 37 degrees centigrade. So these kind of the animal look here. The external temperature, external environment is changing, but enter here this graph, this line shows internal environment will change. External environment changes, but due to change in the external environment, internal environment remains constant. So these kind of the animals are called regulator. We are regulator. So humans are regulator. They can regulate their body temperature, right? Or body environment, right? These kind of the animals are called homothermic. They maintain their blood temperature. They maintain homeostasis. All the reaction remains at the same pace. They goes on the same. Pace. So this is this graph is for regulator, where the temp external environment is changing. The changing takes place in external environment. But internal environment is not changing. So humans are those. Second kind of the organism are those where when the change takes place in external environment, the change also internal environment also changes. They are called conformers. Conformers are not that much as strong animals. They are called poikilothermic animals, right? Like lower organism, frog, fishes. If uh, uh, external temperature changes, their blood temperature also changes, right? So these are the called poikilothermic animals, right? 
Poikilothermic are those where poikilothermic have been asked. Homeostasis, homeothermic have been asked. So these are the question. Homeothermic are those in which the blood temperature do not change in the external temperature as per external. <coughs> poikilothermic are those where when external change takes place, their internal moment also changes. That's why poikilothermic cannot survive in the extreme environment. There are third category, partial regulator. What about the partial regulator? First, when external change takes place, internal changes also takes place. But at the certain level, they regulate their body temperature. That is called partial regulator. Is it clear or not? Please tell me, guys. Conformer regulator and partial regulator. Is that clear? Sir, can you explain partial regulators again? Yeah, partial regulator, like frog. Right. So initially, if external temperature will change, their body temperature will change. But after some time, right, they will maintain their body temperature. After some time, there is a limit. First, external change takes place, the internal also changes. But after that, after some time, they will regulate their body temperature. They are called partial regulator. Regulate means like how? Uh, suppose that the external temperature is going down, so their blood temperature will first go down, right? Then uh, suppose that their blood temperature is uh, at 21 degrees centigrade. Uh, external change taken place to 16 degrees centigrade and it's going down. So their blood temperature will go to the 16 degree. After 16 degrees centigrade, their blood temperature will not fall down. They will maintain at that level. Irrespective of external, suppose that external environment temperature goes to 8 degrees centigrade, but they will maintain at 16 degrees centigrade. Below 16, it is not going to down, right? Got it? Okay, okay, sir. Maintaining temperature, why the higher organism can do, do this thing? Because maintaining the temp body temperature is energy expensive process and the lower organism cannot afford it. That is the logic behind it. Got it? Yes, sir. And if the organism is unable to tolerate that. What it will do? There is one more option, fourth option. Migration, like Siberian crane. When temperature goes down in Serbia, uh, Siberia, they will move, they move to India. When temperature again maintained in the Siberia, they goes back to Siberia. So they are called a migrator. But migration process is possible for the case of animals also. Plant do not migrate, right? The lower organism have one more practice to face the change in external environment. That is called suspension. Very, very important. When the temperature is not favorable, seed will undergo dormancy. They will not germinate. They will wait the environmental condition to become favorable. Protozoa, like amoeba, what happened when the temperature become high or low? They close themselves inside a hard covering, and that hard covering is called cyst. Right? They will close themselves and under a hard covering called cyst. When the favorable condition will come, the cyst will rupture and they will come out. Right? So suspension. They suspend. What is the suspension? They suspend their reproduction process. They suspend their growth. Right? Hibernation. The animal sleep for. During the winter time, like polar bear, winter time during the winter time, polar bear sleep for whole winter, and it waits for the winter to pass out. So they go for long sleep. That is called hibernation. During the summer time, when the temperature is high, uh, the lizard sleep for longer time. It go inside creatures in the colder places and sleep for the longer time. That is called estivation, right? Diapause. The very low organism like dew plankton. They suspend their growth rate, right? Right? And they will wait for the unfavorable condition to pass. This is called diapause. Is that clear or not? They all are important. Hibernation, estivation, diapause, I all have been asked as a question. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, regulator, conformer, migrate, suspend. Dormancy, hibernation, estivation, diapause, all we have discussed. If you want, you can take the screenshot of this one as well. Take it. In migration, I have uh, uh, highlighted this one. K 
Keola Deo National Park in Bharatpur, Rajasthan. This is also a question. And many times in the need, this question came. You have to remember the Keola Dev National Park. Let me uh, highlight it uh, with the highlighter as well. Vivarian Dev. Yes. Look, so Siberian crane, I have underlined that. The Siberian cane, they fly from the region of the Keula Dev National Park in the Bharatpur, right? And they come from the Siberia, right? So this thing I have highlighted. You have to remember this thing. Because the Keula Dev National Park, where it is, this question has been asked. It is in Rajasthan. So the rest of the thing we have discussed. And let's move in the next PPT. Adaptation. What is adaptation? What is adaptation? Adapting to something. Exactly. Adapting adapting to changes. Changing in moment. Right. Very good. The meaning of adaptation implies how the species changes the body and behavior to better suit for the natural environment. Right. They changes body, the structure. Means if the temperature is high, they will develop. Uh, they will. Uh, uh, there will be very less hair. Right and thin skin if light color body if the temperature is lower dark color body thick skin thick furs right they will develop like that right and behavior uh behavior how does behavior work can you tell me desert at the night time temperature goes very low so the lizard their body temperature changes, right? Because lizards are not that much, they are the partial regulator, right? At the morning time, you will see all the lizard, they will open their mouth and bask to sun. All the, they will uh, reach at the rock, they will open their mouth and bask to sun. What they do? Open mouth and bask to sun. Actually, they take the, what? They take the sunlight to increase their body temperature. So that is a behavioral change, right? There is an estimated 8.7 million species currently living on the earth. The process of adaptation ensures that this, these species which adapt the most will survive. So those species which are which are found in the changing environment, they can survive in the changing environment, they will only survive. Right? Uh, many of the species, they are unable to survive in the changing environment. Let me give you an example. Technology is increasing. We are uh, using the internet frequently, right? And uh, high intensity of internet are being uh, used. So the sparrow is about, they, that is endangered right now. The sparrow, you must have listened to this. The sparrow, their population is decreasing rapidly and they are in danger. So they are unable to adapt themselves in this changing environment. So adaptation, morphological adaptation means external change. Adaptation, right? When an organism change externally, a change external feature to survive, right? Apantia or xerophytes, right? They are found in high temperature. So what they do? Their leaf convert into spine, so that water loss become limited. A stem perform photosynthesis. When leaves convert into uh, 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 this one is fine, will perform the photosynthesis. So when the leaf, they, this is Apantia, when these, these are the leaves, they convert into spine. So what will happen? This part is called philoclad, right? This part, the stem part. This stem part perform the photosynthesis, this part. Perform the, it is green in color, it perform, this part perform the photosynthesis, right? The stem can collect the water. There is a sponge-like structure inside this and mucus that collect the water. So that is the morphological adaptation. What is the Allen's rule? 
Can anybody tell me what is the Allen's rule? No one? Come on, guys. Allen's rule is that the organism which are found in the uh, lower uh, temperature areas, their ear and limbs will be shorter to prevent the heat loss. That is called Allen's rule. Remember it, guys. It is there in NCRT, Allen's rule. The teenage beat? So write it down the Allen's rule uh, as it is. What is whatever is written in NCRT. Let me tell you what's there in NCRT. Just I will tell you uh, what is the page number. Here. Let me search it. Page Allen's rule. That is there in this part. Education. Education. Notice on, ma'am, it is written in the page number, if you have old NCRT, page number 226 in adaptation part, it is there. Mammals from the colder climate generally have, mammals, note it down, mammals from the colder climate generally have shorter ear and limbs to minimize the heat loss. Mammals from the colder climate generally have shorter ear and limbs to minimize heat loss. This is called Allen's rule. Allen's rule have been asked, right? Sometimes question directly come from NCRT. Polar seal, they have blubber to reduce the heat loss. Blubber is a fatty tissues. Mm -hmm. uh, they have they have lots of fat. So that is called blubber. Physiological adaptation. Zero flight plants, they have the CAM mechanism, Crassulation acid mechanism. So what is CAM mechanism? Look, if you want, you can note it down. They open their stomata at night time. If they will open stomata at daytime, complete water loss will take place and they will die. So plant open their stomata at night time. At night, they absorb the carbon dioxide from environment and convert into crassulation acid, can. Yeah. At the daytime, stomata remains closed. Crassulation acid break into carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide, it will rise by the plant to make the food in daytime. So that's how they make the food without opening stomata at the daytime. This is called crassulation acid metabolism. Is that clear, can? Yes, sir. In Australia, there is a uh, rat called kangaroo rat that make water by the oxidation of fat. It can make water. And the same thing with the camel. The hump of the camel is made up of fatty tissue. When the camel will feel the scarcity of the water and that, that it is about to die, it will start making water from utilizing oxidation of its fat. This mechanism is found in kangaroo root, uh, rat, uh, kangaroo rat and camel. Got it? Remember this example? Yes. This is physiological. Behavioral adaptation. Basking in the sun lizard, I have already told you. Right? Goosebump. What happened? When you feel shivering, when you feel cold, goosebumps takes place. So, uh, how it affects uh, between the, uh, these are uh, 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 goosebumps the water uh, the air get trapped right and it prevent the heat loss actually shivering like you are shivering and uh, like uh, your teeth are like joys like it's trembling so what happened this is the mechanism of producing the energy so this is the behavioral adaptation when you feel like this one like trembling uh, trembling like this one right during when you are shivering this is the mechanism that's how the body generates the heat when you are shivering you are feeling shivering on that time, body is just uh, uh, trying to generate more energy to save yourself, to maintain your temperature. Is that clear to all of you? Adaptation part? Mamuna, is it clear? Yes, sir. Very good.
अक्सा क्लियर हिबा इज दट क्लियर यस सर वेरी गुड the next one is population attribute so you know the population attribute it's easy remember this formula look population density how the population density will be decided first thing immigration when dubai people from india people from pakistan people from bangladesh they go to dubai when they go so that is called immigration they increase the population of dubai they keep most of the people uh, they settle down over here they increase the population that is the immigration so immigration add on the population natality those people who are living over there they are giving the birth to young ones that is called natality right so due to natality so they increase the population so immigration and birth natality it increase the population so n is the number of the population people in the number of the population means population density b plus i because it is increasing the population minus to who are reducing the population mortality rate some of the people might be dying natural death accident and all that they will reduce the population right immigration those people who are living in the dubai actually they are migrating toward arab continents america european countries countries right so they are reducing the population so the formula will be n is equal to natality plus immigration minus immigration and mortality they three right so that is the formula clear remember formula you can get the question from here i think it's easy it should be clear to all of you right yes okay growth models very 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 important exponential growth curve tell me the example of ex exponential growth curve then i will come to know that do you know it or not examples of exponential growth curve can anybody tell me i'm um, growing of bacteria growing of bacteria yes very good look so is it applicable for human or not this is that is a question actually try to understand this is a logical question you will get from it. it's very very important look this is applicable for very lower animal like fly and mosquito and bacteria you have given very right answer in within a very short time period their population density increases abruptly but what should be the condition will be favorable condition should be favorable condition should be favorable and food and space that should be unlimited that should not be limited right during the rainy season and this is for very short time but during the rainy season temperature is amicable it's a favorable and food and space is scarcity is not limitation for the mosquito mosquito and fly their population increases abruptly right so this is applicable for smaller on, uh, uh, organism look the population density within short time it is increasing level this is called j shaped growth curve or exponential growth, ex, uh, exponential uh, sorry exponential growth curve is it clear or not tell me guys is it clear because this is the question if it's not yes, clear sir. you will miss the question please come on tell me respond please yes sir great so for human or other higher organism this is the logistic growth curve which is uh, which is uh, look uh, let me tell you the formula dn that is the change in the population density and dt that is the change in the time right and rn that is the rate of the population growth rate right now logistic growth curve this is applicable for human this is applicable for deer this is applicable for higher organism or mammals right this is also known as the verhulst perl logistic growth curve he is the scientist who developed it so logistic growth curve is called sigmoid growth curve because shape is s it is also called verhulst perl logistic growth curve why 
because the space and food that is not unlimited for anyone any organism why suppose that there is a very large ground and there is a lots of grasses over there deer population is there is no predator deer can freely roam here and there and they can eat the green grass sweet green grass in initially they will increase their population very rapidly very rapidly number of the deers will come after when the population will increase too much these deer will eat all the grasses right they will they will start fighting for the space they will be start fighting for the grasses they will start dying and at particular level the population will become population density will become constant this level when the population density will become constant this is called k carrying capacity every environment every ecosystem have its carrying capacity beyond that it cannot afford that population let's say dubai there is a particular carrying capacity after that the city cannot city cannot afford the people singapore they cannot afford because the land is limited the food is limited and the carry so that that is a carrying capacity right so it make so first in a sigmoid first the when the is food and space is abundant the population will increase rapidly then after when it will reach to the carrying capacity the population will become constant right dn upon dt so dn is that is the density uh, uh, change in population change in time or in the rate of the population k is carrying capacity right k is the carrying capacity and n is the population density right is that clear or not tell me guys tell me frankly is it for both uh, humans and other small organisms no no it is not developed for uh, for a small organism because a small organism they will suddenly die and moment when the condition moment change they will disappear so it is only for like uh, large organisms yeah more developed organism larger organism right so you will get the question from like the deer why i have given the example of deer because i have seen a question in uh, uh, right uh, this one aims right so that deer population what i explained to you that was the question that's why i have given this example okay the mosquito the question need in the mosquito uh, question came from the mosquito and the fly in the need examination that's why i given that example right these are the question and that kind of the question will be there which of the following growth curve will be there right you will give it a situation two or three in three line situation right in ecology the questions look one more thing very i want your 100% focus over all for all of you the questions from ecology will be lengthier and the student get feared they do not take the uh, risk to read them and they skip them whereas if you have good reading capability the questions from this section will be very easy what you have to do you have to read fast carefully and your understanding should be your reading head should be good so do more and more question from ecology definitely you will get good marks you know a uh, student get feared when they oh my god there are four line or five line of the question and the options are also low. that is the fear factor while the answers of this if you read out it uh, coolly you will get the answer these are tricks to crack the examination right psychology i am developing your psychology to track the uh, to tackle the examination right question paper only do not only deal with the only the uh, knowledge of student they also deal with the examination pressure population interaction predator predator you know there is a prey which is used as a food and there is a predator right what predator do it used or it kill the whole kill the prey for its uh, uh, food right so one it get benefited positive and one it get harmed negative so that will be the relationship you can get these kind of the symbols as well what is the uh, good with the predation they maintain the population of prey otherwise the scene will be like that the same scene of deer i told you they maintain the density right they maintain the density of population right they also maintain the diversity 
because if the deer population will increase if the loin is not there deer population will increase they will start killing the goats and all other herbivores and they will uh, kill the other small herbivores and they will die right and their population will be wiped out uh, wiped out so by this way they decrease the diversity competition when uh, organism compete for food and space competition will be food uh, 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 competition will be uh, more if there is a food and space choice is same right competition competition will be less if the food and space choice is the different competition may be intra specific within the species because the same species want the same kind of the space same kind of the food it may be inter specific always for example a bird which visit in the uh, uh, united state uh, united state uh, I, a lake so the flamingo bird flamingo eat zoo plankton and the fishes which are the found in that lake they also use the uh, they also eat the same plankton so if there are two these are the two different species they have there is no correlation right one is from pisces and one another is from avis right so both are from different group but their food choice is same that's why the competition can be between the two species or two unrelated species got it it is a conceptual question got it then got it yes sir gauss competitive exclusion principle efficient one will remove inefficient what happen in galapagos island there was a resident turtle those heavy turtle used to eat the grass they used to graze the grass what happened some of the sailor they bring the goats goats are very efficient in grazing the grass right they grazed all the grass they root out the bad thing with the goats that root out the uh, grasses right the turtle resident turtle could not compete with the grass because the goats are more efficient in eating the grass so they removed the turtle from their resident turtle from there the species wiped out because they could not face the competition so this is called gauss competitive exclusion principle when two closely related species they use the same source the ineffic the inefficient species is wiped out by the efficient one is that clear yes sir parasitism one host one parasite parasite do not have intention to kill right it take the only food and shelter from the host so one is benefited one is what is a brood parasitism any one of you brood parasitism this is the question brood parasitism no look the best example is cuckoo quail cuckoo lay the it, its egg in the nest of crow cuckoo never make its nest crow think that this is they are their own eggs they uh, hatch the egg when the egg rupture the cuckoo comes out then crow come to know that they are not their own offspring they are taking care of someone else offspring so this is called brood parasitism or social parasitism got it or not got it yes sir okay uh so that was the parasitism last but not the least that is the commensalism the best example is orchid orchid here one is not benefited neither benefited not harmed another is benefited orchid are the plant which are found on the and on the trees mango tree right they neither they take nutrition nor they take water they just uh, uh, 
uh, found on the plant. They use it as a platform, right? And uh, they are the photosynthetic plant. They make their own food. They have a special kind of the tissue that is very important. Their roots have a special kind of the tissue called velamen tissue. Velamen tissue are hygroscopic, means it absorb the it is absorb the moisture from external environment, and uh, that's how it take the water. Got it or not? Remember velamen tissue. So orchid are example of commensalism, where one is benefited, another is so. Here the orchid is benefited. It is taking the shelter, taking the base, right? And mango neither is harmed nor it benefited. See anemone, another example. This question I've been asked. There is a fish. Name is clown fish. Clown fish is found inside the sea anemone. Sea anemone have very stinging the kind of these tentacles. But clown fish, they do not uh, sting the clown fish. Clown fish is protected from the enemy inside sea anemone, right? So clown fish get protection, but sea anemone is neither get uh, harmed nor get benefited. So this kind of the interaction, this kind of interaction is called commensalism. It is important. Clear? Yes, sir. One last mutualism when both get benefited. Symbiotic relationship, always called symbiosis. L, there is a lichen are made up of algae and fungi. Algae is called phytobiont and fungi is called mycobiont. Right? Algae gives food to fungi and fungi gives water and mineral to algae. So both are helping each other. And this is an example of mutualism. When both are, so there will be positive sign for the both. Mycorrhiza, same thing. Fungi and gymnosperm. Fungi gives water to mycorrhiza and uh, in return it get uh, uh, this one. In return it get uh, uh, food uh, from the gymnosperm root. Is that clear all of you? Yes sir. Any doubt? Saifullah, Hiba, Hanifa, Aksa, anyone of you? No doubt sir. No doubt? Okay. So this chapter completed here. In next class, We'll cover the next chapter, right? That is the ecosystem. Go through with this question, uh, 